Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera, salam integriti. Pada hari ini saya akan menyampaikan satu ceramah towards understanding the context and concept of academic integrity. Di dalam ceramah ini saya akan menyampaikan satu konsep tentang academic integrity ataupun apa dipanggil sebagai kewibawaan akademik. Ianya sangat penting kerana ianya menjadi asas kepada uh, pembinaan akhlak dan juga uh, etika para pelajar dan juga para akademik. Saya akan menyampaikan uh, ceramah ini dalam uh, dua bahasa, bahasa Inggeris dan bahasa Malaysia. Dan uh, oleh kerana <coughs> kewibawaan akademik ataupun akademik integriti starts from school, begins in the school. It lays the foundation of good honours and responsible behaviours right from the young age. The aims of the lecture, number one, I shall be discussing uh, four, four uh, important areas. Number one is to talk about integrity, academic integrity. Second, I will discuss about plagiarism. Third, I will discuss about uh, publishing, yeah, publish, public academic publishing. Uh, fourth, I will touch upon corruption uh, in academia. Definition of academic integrity. Academic integrity is uh, slightly different from uh, what we have been uh, discussing so far. Nevertheless, there are similarities in that uh, academic integrity also uh, is uh, contingent upon the inner self. Yeah? Uh, it has six important uh, fundamental values. However, <coughs> I wish to add that uh, overriding all this, of course, uh, one must have faith that one must act and serve, serve Allah in mind and believe in one's de destiny. Every one of us is entrusted to pursue the good life to the best that one can achieve, but without forgetting that life is somewhat a test of time and a test of one's faith. So the first one, honesty, or in Bahasa Malaysia, kejujuran. Academic communities of integrity advance the quest for truth and knowledge through intellectual and personal honesty in learning, teaching, research and service. There's an important word here also, communities. Academic community means the whole uh, lot of uh, academia found in the different countries. Just like when we say the Palestinian, overseas Palestinian community, found in different countries, or overseas Chinese community found in different countries. They are the same community. So academic community means all the academia in the different countries, and they are guided by the same principle of academic uh, integrity. Honesty, coming back to the first one, honesty is the foundation of teaching, learning, and research, as well as service. Yeah? Of course, dishonest behavior uh, not only jeopardizes the welfare academic communities, but also violates the rights of its members. And it can also tarnish the reputation of the institution and diminish, diminish the worth of the degrees it grants. Second is trust or amanah. Academic communities of integrity both foster and rely upon the climates of mutual trust Climate of trust encourages and support the free exchange of ideas. So when you have honesty, uh, it, serves, it serves as a value that allows for and encourages the development of, of trust. Trust is a necessary foundation because it enables us to collaborate, to share information, to circulate new ideas, without fear that our work will be stolen or our careers stunted or our reputations uh, diminished. Third is fairness. 
fairness whereby uh, the academic communities of integrity establish clear and transparent expectations, standards, practices to support fairness in interaction between students, students and academia, academia and administration. Yeah? So fair treatment is an essential factor in the establishment of ethical communities. Fourth is respect, Salim Muhammadi. Academic communities of integrity value this uh, interactive, cooperative, participatory nature of learning. They honor, value, and consider diverse opinions and, and ideas. So communities, as I mentioned just now, only succeed where there is respect for the community members or for the diverse and sometimes contradictory opinions that they express. Number five is responsibility, tanggung jawab. Yeah? Of course, in everything that one does, uh, uh, it rests upon foundations of personal accountability coupled with the willingness of the indiv individuals and groups to lead by example, uphold mutually agreed upon standards and take action when they counter wrongdoings. Responsibility for upholding values and integrity is simultaneously an individual duty in the shared concern. And the last important value is courage. Courage is important to develop and sustain, and sustain communities of integrity. It takes more than simply believing in the fundamental values. Translating the values from talking points to action, standing up for them in the face of pressure and adversity, this requires determination, commitment, and courage. Courage, as Aristotle says, is the first human, human of human qualities because it is the quality which guarantees the others. What is the integrity, integrity in a person? Integrity means following your moral or ethical convictions and doing the right thing in all circumstances, even if no one is watching. This is important. What is the difference between integrity and honesty? Honesty is uh, being truthful, sincere, and free of deceit. Integrity is steadfast adherence yeah, to a strict moral or ethical code. What does academic integrity mean? In nutshell, academic integrity of students means applying the integrity to the way they complete assignments and essays to the way they approach examinations. Every piece of their work that they submit are their own. And they had uh, pro properly cited and credited all references that they use. For academics, having academic integrity means speaking and expounding in one's own area expertise. Publishing the original work, being responsible to one's role and keeping an honest an empathetic relationship with students and colleagues. Now I come to the second part of my presentation, plagiarism. Plagiarism is the representation of another author's language, thoughts, ideas, or expressions as one owns original work. Plagiarism is considered academic dishonesty and a breach of journalistic ethics. It is a major problem uh, among students and to a certain, a certain extent amongst academic. Plagiarism is copying another person's ideas, words, writing, and pretending that they are one's own work. Now, why do people plagiarize? They attribute this to advancing technology. Many plagiarize simply because they can do it and they feel that they won't get caught. Many people plagiarize simply because they had the opportunity and that's the end of it. Let's look uh, closer. Collectively, most people plagiarize because they desire to get good grades. They fear failing among students, uh, procrastination. They are not panic stricken, you know. There's not enough time. Disinterest in the assignment, believe they'll get not caught and then sometimes confusion about the, about the university uh, policies. Individually, it's because students 
uh, of more often than not, uh, uh, they, 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 they do that because uh, they claim they lack familiarity with the basic commercial research and attribution. Essentially, they didn't have uh, the proper research skills. And uh, to a certain extent, people perceive hard work in the web environment. They do not seem to understand that uh, internal reflection of self-struggle, all, all answers to them are external. They exist out there waiting to be discovered. Hard work to them means sitting at a computer looking for an answer for as long as it takes. This, this, uh, this is a poor perception of what hard work, hard work means. The web also has an effect on uh, plagiarism, of course, over-reliance. Yeah? And that's the, the belief that research and writing means cut and paste. And uh, the difference between good and bad work is the difference between clever and inept cutting and pasting. Of course, <clears throat> when works are plagiarized, it is uh, part of the code of conduct to check for the level of plagiarism. So phrases, paragraphs are often submitted, submitted into a, a system, one of which is the Turnitin. And if we find that more than 50%, 15% of the material has been plagiarized, it is, it is considered that, uh, for example, if a, a submitted thesis with that higher score, can be rejected. And the student or candidate uh, may fail, may fail the program, may fail the thesis. My third uh, aspect of my uh, discussion today is to talk about uh, the academics publish or perish. Now this adage, you know, this aphorism describing public, uh, publish or perish is, uh, has been within, the, within academia for a long, long time. The pressure to publish academic work in order to succeed in the academic career. This is related to what we call being scholarly. Uh, being a scholar requires that the person publish uh, one's work. You know? And successful publications bring attention to the scholar and they are sponsoring institutions which can help continue funding and their careers. In a competitive world today, like uh, the ranking in universities uh, being the gold standard nowadays, academics are expect expected to publish often, as publishing rates are often used as a key performance indicator to measure academic success. Not only do academics need to publish often, to stay relevant, but they also need to publish often to validate their research to their bosses. Now, in essence, this culture has often led to some dishonesty, of course, uh, especially in, trying, in, in the, trying to show their prowess for research and their publication in so-called high-impact journals. As you know, the academia practice an open scheme whereby it's not necessary that you have an uh, opening for uh, associate professor or professor. As long as you uh, meet the requirement, you can be promoted. So one of the parameters of this race is the H-index. H-index score that is currently achieved by the person. The H-index is a uh, author level metric that attempts to measure both productivity and citation impact of the publication of a scientist or scholar. The index can be applied to productivity and impact of a scholarly journal as well as a group of scientists, such as a department or university or country. So H-index is very important. Uh, it was developed by a German called Hirsch and it has now become the gold standard. Uh, when we want to evaluate a person, a scholar, a professor, more often than not, we ask, we ask for what is the H-index 
uh, that particular person. Uh, H index is calculated according to the number of publication that has been published. Okay. Roughly, like in the social sciences, maybe about uh, uh, ten, about eight to ten publications in cited journals, uh, then you may gain one point. Uh, so a a professor uh, in the social science. Uh, should be having uh, five uh, a H index of five and above, yeah? but in the in the sciences you may have to have ten and and above. So the higher the H index, uh, the more esteem that professor has. In a nutshell, <clears throat> an article may be produced by research, and the main aim is to get it well read and of course published published in uh, renowned journals. And the general academic worth of the article is ranked below. One is ordinary article that has been circulated, perhaps appearing in newspaper or magazine. Second, a paper presented at a conference or seminar, sometimes in a proceeding. Third, article in an edited uh, periodical. Fourth, article in a peer-reviewed journal. The more prestigious the print publisher, the better. To preserve integrity, many scripts are sent to journals. Sent to journals are blind reviewed, meaning that you don't know who uh, who the writer is, nor do you know who the reviewer is. In double blind review, neither reviewers or authors know who the the other party is. Yeah? So that's how they maintain this academic integrity. integrity uh, for the whole world within, within academia. Articles in a Scopus Index Journal of Elsevier or Science Citation Index or Clair Clarivate Analytics are also highly regarded. And articles in high impact or high tier journals like uh, Journal of Nature or Journal of Psychology. By the way, uh, journal, uh, an article in nature or in psychology is, uh, is valued higher than an ordinary article. Yeah? Scopus. Scopus is about the term. Uh, it is under uh, the publisher Elsevier. Elsevier is based in, uh, in, the, in Holland. Uh, it handles so many uh, citation indexes and it has a business of about uh, three, 3 billion US dollars a year. Similarly, Claire Rivet, Claire Rivet is now uh, formerly of uh, Rajas and uh, Thompson, but now it is Claire Rivet and it is uh, owned by uh, Canadian and uh, Chinese interests. They also do a lot of business and handle a lot of publications, 30,000, 40,000 publications. Now, the inherent desire of an academic is to have as many good articles published, just thus uh, pushing his uh, or her H index in citation scores. As I said, it's now the higher the H index, presumably, the more scholarly the author is. And I'll wait uh, more certainly to be uh, promoted. I will now come to the come to the uh, almost the last part of my uh, presentation. I will talk about enhancing integrity and credibility. To enhance one's credibility, one has to also uh, uh, ensure that uh, we can handle our own communication st strategy whereby we being homophilous or heterophilous. Homophilous is when the communicator and receiver with have similar characteristics like language, ethnic grouping, other characteristics. And uh, being heterophilous means that the communicator and receiver do have differences between them, such as education, training, place of origin, as well as, well as expertise, for example. Now, depending on the situation, what you want to do is the communicator, communicator should have both homophilous and heterophilous sort of uh, uh, strategies. On one hand, she has, he or she has to break the ice, be accepted, 
and on the other hand becomes believable because of the gap in knowledge and technical know-how. Now the last part, conclusion and overall implications of professional careers as well as uh, corruption in publication. Now the event, uh, uh, what I, I want to uh, impact here is the growing concern about the upsurge of educational fraud which threatens the value to devalue higher education and undermine academic integrity as well as cause harm. Yeah? Fraud and corruption exist in various forms uh, beyond contract cheating. The global mas manifestations is, uh, uh, is quite uh, impactful. Yeah. The various forms, number one is admissions fraud, whereby uh, students get into universities and colleges uh, by, by, uh, the, by using illegal method to gain admission into the college or university. Second is bribery. Amounts may be paid for admission into universities. Third is examination fraud. News of leaked exam questions and other forms of test-related fraud are commonplace. Essay meals and plagiarism and fabricated research. Forged degrees is also uh, uh, important concern because uh, you may be able to buy these degrees in in small in, in cities uh, across the world yeah? and of course corrupt agents yeah? uh, agents who recruit students from all over the world 30 percent of universities are said to be using agents for undergraduate admissions corruption the accreditation and licensing and of course Last one is a diploma, diploma meals. Now, in conclusion, it is uh, worth uh, noting here that in our country, some of the foregoing problems may not be too severe. However, perhaps peculiar to Malaysia, there's also this uncanny pension for buying degrees, whether they are fake or compromised. That is one. The quid pro quo stance of awarding honorary degrees and the burning desire of public figures to have better qualifications and glorious titles to their names. All these gentlemen, uh, ladies and gentlemen, often bear upon their own sense of integrity and public image. So lastly, how serious is this lack of academic integrity and, serious, and, the, and uh, the seriousness of academic corruption in Malaysia? I think it, it very much depends upon, number one, is it regarded by the public at large as a very serious malpractice or is it just an offence? Because in Malaysia, we hardly hear about these cases being, being brought to court. You know? Second, thus academia has its own method to handle complaints. Thus the university system, thus the ministry have an entrenched uh, method in, in order to handle complaints about uh, corruption. Third, are the authorities equipped to handle it? And fourth, has there been cases, has there been cases being brought to the Malaysian court? Answers to these questions shall shed some light upon the implications and seriousness of academic integrity and corruption in our country. Thank you.